All right, today's project is gonna be a super fun one. We're gonna be taking this gaming setup behind me and we're gonna be turning it into a streaming setup using only Elgato products and we have to do it all for under $500. Now I do need to clarify, when I say $500, I mean $500 for all of the added streaming equipment. We are not factoring in the monitor, the PC, the keyboard, all that stuff. This is basically taking your existing setup and upgrading it to a streaming setup for under that budget. So if you were to take all of the streaming gear that we have today and buy it brand new, it's gonna cost you $620, but I'm gonna show you how you can get it for $440 seven dollars and then we're going to plug it in and actually show you what the quality can look like for this budget so let's start with the elgato face cam here this is the newest product of the bunch came out in 2021 and it is regarded by many as the best webcam on the market and it retails for 170 dollars however if you go to corsair's website they have a refurbished section and you can pick this up for 150 dollars saving you 20 bucks right there. Now, I usually don't advocate for buying used, but when it comes to refurbished, I am a big fan, and that is the key to today's budget, is buying refurbished. When you buy refurbished, it goes through the, the whole certification process, it's cleaned, it's repackaged, it's as if it's new. Then we've got the Wave 1 microphone, and this retails for $99. You can currently get it refurbished from Corsair, for $81, that's $19 you're saving right there. And this is regarded as one of the best USB microphones on the market, especially if you are a streamer, which I imagine you are or want to be if you're watching this video. And then we've got the Stream Deck right here. With the Stream Deck, they have the XL, they've got the Mini. The Mini, in my opinion, is just not enough buttons. And the XL, for most people, including myself, is too many buttons. You don't really need that. So this retails for $150 if you bought it brand new. However, on Corsair's website with the refurbished, they have it as low as $108, which that's huge savings right there. Unfortunately, at the time of this recording at least, it's out of stock. You can get it uh, renewed from Amazon for $120. So you're saving at least $30 there. You could wait for a sale as well. Techaudit.tv is our daily deals website and I have seen this many times. Uh, go for about $125, sometimes even cheaper, brand new. So if you do want to wait it out because you really wanted to get it new, you could uh, you know, bookmark that website and wait for a deal to drop. And the last item we have here is the Elgato ring light. I know I'm going to get crap for putting this on the list because it's $200 and that's not cheap. But let me put this in perspective for you. If you were to get the Elgato key lights, which is what I currently use for my main setup, those are $200 a piece, and with that type of lighting, you wanna have two of those. So now you're out $400. And then you still need to find a place, if you're using something like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, to actually mount your camera. So now you've gotta go out and spend, you know, 30 to 50 bucks on a good camera mount to put on your desk. This comes with a mount built in, so you're saving money there, and you don't need multiple lights. So it's the same price as just one key light and you are getting all of the lighting that you need. Now you might say, well, Brandon, I can go on Amazon and get one for 60 bucks. You know, it's just some generic brand and you can. There is a noticeable difference in the hardware of it. Again, not only can you put a camera on top, but now you can customize all of the lighting from your Stream Deck without having to get up and down, out of your chair, trying to get the lighting just right. There, I just, I love this light so much and it's perfect for someone who's not really a lighting expert where they can just aim at their face and they can get a good even shot. Now let's actually go ahead and hook this up to the gaming setup to see what the shot would actually look like. But before we do that, let me quickly run you through what I've got on this desk because I know I'm gonna have people ask in the comments because there's some pretty cool tech on here. So for the monitor, we've got the G27Q from Gigabyte. It's a 27 inch 1440p screen that pushes out a beautiful 144 Hertz refresh rate. Those lights you see next to the monitor are the LT100 smart light towers from Corsair. And through IQ software, you can customize these lights to do anything you can think of to really give your setup a cool vibe and they also double as a headset holder, which is pretty cool. Below all of that, we've got NZXT's first ever keyboard, and I absolutely love this thing. It's a hot swappable keyboard, and my favorite feature of this is actually the magnetic wrist pad that comes with it. 
And we've also got NZXT's first ever mouse right next to it, which they call the Lift Mouse. The PC for this setup is one I built just before the whole pandemic stuff started. And rather than bore you with all the specs, I'll link to a video I did about this build in the description below. And if you're wondering what kind of desk I'm using for today's setup, it's the Magnus desk from Secret Lab. It's definitely on the high end of the price scale for a desk, but if you're looking for a heavy duty desk with built in cable management, it's worth looking into. All right, so we're just finishing up the building here and there's two things to note. First off, I am using a boom arm for this microphone just to get it nice and close to your mouth. I think that's very important for good audio. In this case, I'm just using a nice cheap newer one that you can grab off Amazon. I'll link to that down below. The other thing is a little bit of a pickle I've run into with this desk in particular. The problem is, is normally you would just go ahead and mount this to the back of a desk. But with a Secret Lab desk, this whole thing here opens up, giving you access to all that cable management, which is really nice. But with mounting, it can present some problems. Typically what they advertise, if you're gonna mount like a monitor system or something like that, you would just mount it in there. The problem is, is this is pretty long and won't fit all the way in there, it bottoms out. So what I'm gonna have to do is kind of treat it like a traditional desk and just mount it on the back. But you can see, we're not gonna get a very secure fit there. So hopefully this will still work at least enough for the shoot. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe I wouldn't recommend the Secret Lab desk if you're gonna go with this exact setup, unless of course you go with a base instead of a clamping uh, mount for your lighting. All right, we have got everything plugged in. All the software is installed. I didn't wanna go through that part because we all know how to install software. Uh, but as you can see, a little bit of a change. I was not able to get the ring light on the back like I thought I would because it just was not stable enough. The slightest touch to the desk was just wobbling that thing. So we got a nice secure fit on the sides of the desk. And honestly, I don't think it looks too bad. You can kind of see behind the monitor. I think that maybe is kind of cool. I don't know. Uh, not a huge fan of having the PC right here. I could obviously pop that off the desk and put it somewhere else. Or using Elgato's camera hub over here, uh, we can zoom in and out. Now, this is not the final picture here. This is just default settings, uh, camera plugged in. Let's see how nice we can get this. And obviously the key to good lighting, sorry, the key to a good picture is good lighting. So the first thing I like to do is take off the auto white balance to see if that changes anything. I actually like where it is with the, with the current white balance. We'll see if that stays. I'm then gonna go over to exposure. And uh, the key, in my opinion, is get the ISO down as low as possible and then get the lighting as high as possible. So using my stream deck over here that you can see, this is, this is where I love the stream deck and the ring light. I'm gonna open up my light settings here and we are going to increase the brightness as bright as we can here. And let's see, how do we like the color here? Uh, do we wanna go a little more orange? Maybe just a little bit of whiting. So I'm adjusting both the brightness as well as the, um, as well as the color temperature here. Now, one of the other things I like about having Stream Deck is once I get like a certain color profile that I like, maybe for this setup, maybe I wanna do another stream where I have the, the big window over here open, that's gonna change the amount of light that I need. You can create, uh, you can create presets with Stream Deck so that I can just go ahead and hit those different buttons and change the lighting. So I like where that is right there. Uh, I may need to bump the ISO up just a little bit, but that's not a big deal. So let's run with that. I, I like the way this looks right here. So we're gonna save it. And the nice thing about the face cam is it saves these settings to the hardware, not just to one piece of software, which many webcams cannot say that. So whether I open it up in Zoom, Streamlabs, OBS, whatever, it's gonna keep those settings, which is really, really nice. So let's close out of that. And then let's open up our stream here. And let's go to the just chatting. And we're gonna wanna change the camera source here so that you all can see here. Let's uh, deactivate, oh, we just had it there. I didn't need to deactivate. 
there we go. Sometimes when you got the, the, the camera open in another software, you've got to deactivate. So there we are. Now we're back, right? Uh, <clears throat> Wavelink. Let's take a quick look at the settings here. We got the Wave 1 coming in. Uh, let's say we want to get some music going. What I like to do for music is I run whatever music I want on stream in Edge. I use Edge because it's a browser, no offense, Microsoft, that I don't use for anything else. So when I get some, let's say, stream beats from Harris Heller going, you can see that I can separate that source over here so I can keep my uh, microphone volume over here and then I can control the music. So let's say we wanna bring it down just a little bit right there. And the way I'm able to do that is when I click into my sound settings on Windows, I can choose where I want different applications to go. So for example, if I had Rocket League opened, it would recognize Rocket League, and then I could uh, drop down and say, you know, all sound that comes from the Rocket League application, make it go to the Wavelink game. So let me close out of that because we don't need that anymore. So we've got everything uh, looking good here. And we've got Stream Deck set up. Again, I love Stream Deck because midstream, if I need to, I can open up my light settings and I can you know, adjust the temperature. I can make the light darker. I could even have it so I can turn off the lights all of a sudden, you know, and you can tie that to your stream or whatnot, put them back on. So it's just really, really nice when you're trying to optimize that without having to get up and like you would with many other ring lights. And we've got our profile set up, moving back and forth. So we got our countdown going. Uh, we go over to the talk. Notice how the music went loud and then really low. That is because over on Stream Deck, I've got all of that stuff automated with the scenes. So you can see that when I hit countdown, there's two actions that happen. We um, open up this specific intro scene and then you can see increase music to this volume, 70%. And then as soon as I go and I hit talk, that is where we got an ad playing because I'm not signed into my premium profile. When I hit talk, you can see it does the same thing, moves to that scene and it goes down to 30%. So there's that is, that is the beauty of, of Stream Deck. And once you get using it, you realize you can't stream without it. Like, you can, but once you stream, you can't go back is, is more so what I'm saying. I'm not saying everyone's got to run out and get it. Obviously, they've got cheaper options if you want to use your phone and whatnot. I think I look pretty good. I don't know. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And just for reference, this is what the stream would actually look like if you were streaming with this exact setup. This feed is coming straight from Streamlabs, whereas before you were watching a screen recording, so you are losing a little bit of resolution. So now you have a better idea of what this camera and setup can actually put out. And uh, you, know, you can do all the cool stuff like a screen share. And hey, how about that? It's a video of me going over some really cool hacks that you can do with your Elgato Wave microphone that a lot of people are not taking advantage of. So if you are a Wave owner or are thinking of buying this microphone, definitely watch this video. And I have linked to that right over here for you. Have a good one.